Tennessee's got their spring game this coming Saturday. The orange and white game. I'm fired up, man. This is going to be a whole lot of fun to watch. So what do we need to preview? What do we need to take an extra close look at as we get closer and closer to that spring game? Everybody in Knoxville knows this. Secondary has got to get better. It has to get better. And I'm not going to go so far as to say that it was just abysmal last year. Now, statistically, it was abysmal. I mean, 287 yards a game allowed, that's very bad. But also, people that just throw that stat out there, I don't think you're giving the proper context. Tennessee's offense runs a whole lot of plays. And so by nature of the offense scoring so much, you allow a lot more drives for the opposing offense. Okay, so with that out of the way, what I want to see from the secondary in the spring game I want to see them trade punches with the Tennessee offense, which sounds sort of simplistic, but think about it this way. This might be the best offense that the Tennessee secondary will play all year long. That's not to say anything of Georgia, not to say anything of Alabama, but for Tennessee secondary, they're playing against a Ferrari of an offense that goes fast and throws the football downfield a lot. I just want to see them swing back a few times. I don't need to have them just play lockdown the whole day because, I mean, Tennessee's offense is probably going to get theirs if we're being real. Squirrel White probably going to get his. We'll talk more about that receiver room here in just a second. I want to see them make some plays on the football. I want to see them, heck, maybe even get an interception on the young quarterback, Nico Yamaliava. Make some plays in this spring game. And it sounds sort of general, but what that would do for your defense just as a player when you make some plays in an 11-on-11 setting, that's not a drill. That's not one-on-ones. It is real deal football. And so to have that in your back pocket where you can look back at the tape and say, yeah, I can hang, that does something for your confidence, man. It does something to have a little bit of extra pep in your step, to have some swag. And in this game, y'all, self-belief, confidence, swag, that is everything. You have to believe in yourself to be able to be effective. Now, I'm not saying the Tennessee secondary doesn't believe in themselves, but I'm saying make some plays in the spring football game. It ain't hurt. It ain't hurt nothing if you make some plays in the spring football game. So keep an eye on that trading punches for this secondary. I think it's important overall. Now make sure you're locked in. Make sure you're subscribed right here on the On3 YouTube channel. We talk ball every single day. Tennessee fans, when this game concludes, I promise you, we will have our thoughts for you on the back end. So make sure you're locked in right there. Now, when it comes to the wide receiver room, I don't have any concerns, but the fact remains there is some production that was left behind by Jalen Hyatt and Cedric Tillman that needs to be accounted for. How much production, you ask? Well, 18 touchdowns, over 100 receptions, over 1,500 yards. You get the gist. Somebody's got to step up and be an alpha dog. I'm not worried about who it's going to be. I'm just worried about what they look like during the spring game. You got Brew McCoy, Jalen Hyatt, Ramel Keaton, Squirrel White, also Deontay Thornton. Transfer from Oregon, a guy they're pretty excited about. Big catch radius, moves pretty well. Really flashed at the end of the year last year for the Ducks. Like, there's some guys now in this room that can make some plays for you. So whether they have 100 yards receiving and a couple touchdowns, like, that'd be nice, right? It'd be a good look. But overall, just what kind of formations are they running in? What kind of groupings are we seeing these guys out there? Do we see Squirrel White on the outside as well as in the slot? Where's Ramel Keaton lining up? How are we lining these guys up? I want to see that because this Tennessee offense, it's like NASCAR. It goes fast. You have a lot of tire changes. Tire changes being the equivalent of playing a lot of different personnel in that wide receiver room. When you go so fast and you run so many routes, you get tired. Like that's just human nature. You're going to get tired when you run as many plays as Tennessee does. So depth at this position is extremely important. We know Brew McCoy can go. We know Squirrel White can go. We've seen Ramel Keaton do it. What do they look like in the spring game? Just taking a pulse, taking a temperature. What do they look like in the spring game? And in what variation are they running? Now, here's the thing that is probably going to get the most of the attention during the orange and white game, and deservedly so. How should we assess this quarterback room? I, I got some thoughts for you here. Because Joe Milton absolutely balled out in the Orange Bowl. Think about it this way. Whenever he has his first overthrow of the day, if he has one, Everybody and their mother is going to say, well, there it is. Old, old Joe Milton is back. We knew that was coming. Hey, Joe Milton is not accurate. That narrative is going to run for miles outside of Knoxville. The word of caution. Do not let whatever he does in this spring football game, in practice 15, I should say, don't let that make you forget what he did in the Orange Bowl. Let me remind you, in the Orange Bowl, he went 19 for 28, 68% completion percentage, 
Translation, he was accurate. Three touchdowns, no picks, 251 yards. Joe Milton can play the position. And if he can't play the position, we're not going to find out in the spring football game. Okay, I would much rather trust what I saw in the biggest stage in a New Year's Six Bowl game where Joe Milton steps in with no no Jalen Hyatt, no Cedric Tillman against a good Clemson team, did his thing. Trust that sample size. Don't put too much weight into the spring game. Be excited about the spring game when he makes some good plays. Applaud that. Be encouraged by that. But you're not finding out anything new about Joe Milton from practice 15. Joe Milton is tried and true. Been through the fires and the flames of adversity. Been benched twice. He's built for this now. He has earned his shot at this thing. So just take the good with Joe Milton. If you see some bad, let's not get up in arms. Now, the guy who's going to get a ton of attention this spring game is Nico Yamaliava. Yamaliava. How about that? Our first error of the day when it comes to that pronunciation. He's, re- he's really young, really talented, really raw. He's talented as all get out. He was the number one player for us here at On3 in the entire 2023 cycle. Translation, he's going to be really good in Knoxville for a really long time. What I just said, he's young and very talented. Expect him to play like that in the spring game. He's going to make some throws that make your jaw drop and say, wow, how did he get it over there? How did he see that safety and fit it in between the corner? He's going to have some plays like that. To the same token, expect him to have some plays where you see his youth show. He's been on campus for like 15 minutes, dude. Give him a break. Let him develop. Let him get comfortable in the college life. Let him get comfortable in this offense. This will be the biggest spot that he has played in. Televised game. Neyland will be bumping, I bet. This is going to be a big spot for him. Allow him to make some mistakes and allow him to make some good throws. Just kind of take the good with the bad, what I always say. Now, if he balls out, if he does some really good things, Let's say he has a better day than Joe Milton, statistically. Let's say Nico throws for three touchdowns, has two incompletions, and he just steals the headlines in the spring game. Don't start this quarterback battle chatter. I'll say this right now. We won't do it on this show, even if Nico throws for five touchdowns and no incompletions. We will not start the whole, is there a QB controversy brewing in Knoxville? We're not going to do that here. We just won't. You want to know why? Because with Nico Yamaliava, there is inevitably going to be growing pains, unless he is just the statistical anomaly of all anomalies. There is going to be growing pains. And for Tennessee, they don't need to account for growing pains in 2023. This team is built to win right now. And Joe Milton has, like I said, weathered the storm, paid his dues, as experienced as it comes in terms of being a college football player. He gives you the best chance to win football games just by nature of experience and by nature of his physical tools. Nico is the future in Knoxville. I can't stress that enough. He is going to be your quarterback for a really long time. But when he plays well in the spring game, if he has a better day, don't say, hey, it's Nico's offense. That's all we need to see. There's a lot more going into this than just one football game. And that is not to say anything less of Nico Yamaliava. He is going to be a stud. I fully believe that. But right now, it's Joe Milton time. You don't need to put up with the growing pains of a true freshman quarterback. You got someone that can win games for you right now. So the spring game is going to be a whole lot of fun in Knoxville, the orange and white game. I'm fired up, man. It's going to be a good time. We're going to watch that one and give you our thoughts, like I just said. A lot to keep a pulse on with Tennessee as they're going to challenge, I believe, for the SEC. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.